Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, Museums Online. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from TechEdge and today I want to talk about doing museum visits online. So obviously if you have museums that are close to you, you want to visit them in person because the space, the properties and seeing the physical objects is fantastic. But online visits allow us to have access to museums we don't usually get to see, whether they're in the country but really far away or across the ocean if you're going to Europe or to China or somewhere else or even if they are local, sometimes you want to do a visit before you actually physically get there so kids are more ready to interact with the specific exhibits and they can choose where they want to go and what they want to focus on. There are lots of opportunities to do these kind of visits online, but one of my favorite is the Google Cultural Institute and what they've done is they've gone across the world and gone to major, major museums and art areas and historical events and historical sites and have created these, the ability to visit these places, to walk through them digitally, and also to see the exhibits up close. So I have right now here the example of uh, going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And you can see that I can zoom in on specific art pieces. I can zoom in closer, right? Just as if I was standing right there, I can see the different exhibits on the bottom. This is of course not everything they have, but these are some of the interesting exhibits. And these are great exhibits that kids might be interested in. And since we're in Nebraska, this is a way to visit a museum that's really far away from us uh, in New York. And most of our students won't have the opportunity to visit there, at least not anytime soon. And you can see that there's a map here on the left hand side that actually shows you where you are in the museum and which direction you're looking. So you can actually move yourself very, very quickly to a different room, look up, move with the arrows and see what you can see and I can raise my gaze up. So this works very much like Google Earth. It is Google Earth but inside buildings and it allows you to do this kind of visit and move through the exhibits as they were at the time they took the pictures and this is on a regular basis updated so you can actually see as things change in the museum and I'm just showing you how we can hop between exhibits and really see now we're really close to the wall uh, but we can zoom out and see the details and here we can even learn about membership this is the museum store so it's really a map of the whole museum in great detail and you can actually explore what other museums they have and you can see that you can look at specific art projects historical moments and uh, world wonders so if we go to world wonders again this is google cultural institute we can go somewhere completely different uh, let's say to uh, Mont Blanc and see the tramway and you can see that now you can navigate this both with a mouse or with a keyboard and I'm just navigating with the keyboard you can see there's text and pictures and this allows you to really see how this was created this is in uh, in this case uh, connected to my to the country I was born in Switzerland so it's really interesting to me how they accomplished this feat uh, anyway this is a way to explore different museums and different cultural aspects through Google. Google keeps adding to this, so this is really exquisite and is getting better all the time. Very rich content that seems to be with us for a long time. So this is one, one way to access museums online and a, a huge reach resource. Another one is to go to museum websites and apps. I personally, and I'll show you in a second why, I prefer the apps most of the time, the mobile apps, and they have two advantages. First of all, they're created especially for educational purposes, and they're created also to work with you if you go to the museum. So these mobile apps actually help you to go through the museum, navigate, and find out more about the exhibits that are already there. And in that way, they are incredibly helpful, especially if you're working with kids and you want them to explore, and you can't be everywhere. And Docent can take you through a few stations. But if you want kids to have some free exploration time, this is a great way for them to get some uh, 
of their own information and find out more details about the artist, about the period, or anything else that is connected to that specific show. So you can do it through the website, and right now I'm showing the website for MoMA because we just were on there uh, through the Cultural Institute. And you can see that this is a traditional uh, website in many ways, and it has a lot of local information, but it does have some explorations of the uh, works that are available and you can view works more uh, closely, you can share them, so you can actually see lots of what's being offered at the museum. But I would argue that this works much better in the apps that are designed especially for that. So I'll share with you uh, the app from uh, MoMA and what you can see is that on this one you have a lot of access to a large board with a lot of art so you this is modern art it is the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art so uh, you really have access to a lot of products that you can just swipe through which is much easier to navigate than the way the website works and it has access to a lot of products throughout and you can see how easy it is to get some uh, to get the information about the work you can immediately get the information that's available right there you can read more and you can also bookmark and even share it uh, again, sharing is not always open to our students because that requires social media, but definitely saving and creating their own show is one of those things that students can be creative about. So after you go through or as you go through a museum or as you go through an online museum, you can create your own show by highlighting specific artists and specific uh, examples of the work that is available there and now you can see that you can explore a specific artist so once you turn that on you can see other examples of that artist's work so this works on the app a lot better than it does on the website because the app is designed with a visual in mind and with a lot less clicking involved and just the art available to you at all times so Again, if we click out of that, you can see that at the same time, you can still see the maps of what's available, uh, videos of different pieces in the museum and about them. And then uh, if you go back to the home button, you can see what other, uh, what other shows are there. So this is MoMA. And the other piece at MoMA that um, I really do like is they do have an art lab which allows kids to be creative. So they've created an app that asks students to be creative on the app itself. And it allows them to draw, to make, uh, to rotate and to be playful and creative at the same time. So this shifts from a consumption perspective to a production perspective and really trying to either imitate or uh, use as a starting point existing points, uh, uh, works of art or of course to just create on a blank canvas like we have right now. So these are some ways that we can interact with museums uh, and visit them whether we do it on a website and through or through Google Cultural Institutes or we do it through uh, the apps. And I'll see you next time on mobile learning in the classroom.